Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Thursday, June 30th, 2022. Uh, my apologies for the lateness in getting this posted, uh, but I did have prior commitments and that actually took longer than I expected. In any case, diving right into the markets, let's look at the NQ for today. I continue to leave the labeling as is. The market did progress today. The market did actually come within 30 points of what I was pegging as a fairly solid uh, support area where further decisions could be made about what our short-term picture actually is going to look like. So I'm going to drop this down, but first let me just say I continue to leave it ABC. I put nothing above it. What the choices are at the moment <clears throat> are that it is a minute wave A. We'll get a minute wave B and possibly complete, possibly. And then a minute C wave up. And that minute C wave carries the potential should the market decide to turn and go higher from here. And again, no bias to bullish or bearish. So I could begin to tell you why they would want to do it. But it's out there and it's a possibility that the market could turn, start to move, go above 12,388, 12,705, and up towards 13,000. And it's only a possibility, but that would complete a minor wave two. And that's all. So this is a very technical picture that we, I have to include because it is yet to break below. It has broken nicely, providing some really clean, nice trades. And I'm going to drop this down to the hourly chart <clears throat> to kind of show what both sides could be telling us. Uh, for this to be complete, I'd have to be able to count this as an ABC. And I can A, B, and then work this to be five as a C wave. And so it could be an ABC. Right now, the other choice, which would continue the downside, is that it's a one, two, three, four, five of minute wave one of minor wave three. So the outside is that the downside picture is very strong in terms of the power that it would have behind it if it's in force. Okay, so that situation kind of tells us that. If the market is going to go down, it's going to get hit and it's going to move. We have seen it. We've saw little bits and pieces of it today. They were decent, but I would feel that if it drops into this third, then it's going to go a lot faster and it's going to break below 11,068 pretty quickly. And we're now at 540. So yes, we could go and it would be within a third wave. And again, I'm not biased. So I'm not gonna to try to pick out of the air or even out of the reality that we're confronting any one specific reason that'll drive the market lower or a specific reason why a big bank or a fund or sellers are moving in and hitting different things. And what does that number, if that number is negative, what does it really mean? It's like, you know, these are algorithms and they're programmed and this is their reaction. Now, what continues to really follow is that the Elliott, while not definitively clear, does tell us a couple of things. That number one, the trend is down. So the all-time high remains in place. And that's right there. And we got to travel up to find out what degree we're correcting in. We're correcting in a super cycle wave four. Within that are going to be an ABC of cycle degree, an ABC of primary degree, and an ABC of uh, intermediate degree. And I thank one of my subscribers. I think their subscriber, but he was a comment. And upon reflection, realized that, yes, what I was attempting to actually show uh, was not correctly labeled. I still can get a devastating C wave, which is the way I'm looking at this right now, but it does actually fit cleaner and also fits Elliot to 
use this as an ABC because the corrections will be the same and no matter the degree. So I'm looking for an ABC super cycle, ABC cycle, ABC primary, and ABC intermediate. There's A, there's B. We're going to get down in a C wave, and that's going to be primary wave A. Then we'll get a primary B and a primary C, and that'll be cycle wave A. And then we'll get a cycle B and a cycle C, and that will complete super cycle wave four. Where's it all going to end up? I still owe you guys the big picture. And guess what? I got a holiday weekend coming up and I will have plenty of time. So I promise that over the weekend, I will be putting that out both for the NASDAQ and the S&P. Big picture catch up. Um, and it's actually going to look at both counts. It's going to look at a C-wave completing in these neighborhoods and then a C-wave completing much deeper. <clears throat> All right. So, but for tomorrow, I'm going to go down to the hourly chart now. We're looking at the possibility of some a stronger turn. So that would include the inside here is for a third wave down. And the measurement is, oops, yeah, I can get down the four. The measurement is one to the top of two. And that's, that's assuming that this is minor wave two and that we are dropping in that third wave. So to, to be clear, when I drop down to that hourly chart and I'm looking at these inside Fibonacci extensions, they are reflecting the possibility of a minor third wave being in force now. And if that's the case, these are the levels that I would be expecting to see get tossed aside pretty quickly. Above, yes. 68, yes. Down into here, yes. It'll pause. I think it pauses for the cause there because it's a little bit lar larger degree support. So, but I believe where it will end up is down sub 10,000. If it is a minor third wave starting from that high, if this market decides that no, it's coming off and it's going to turn and it's going to do a C wave up and we end up here, it doesn't dismiss that next wave print, uh, you know, that picture. We would just be finishing a minor wave two up higher than this. So we could get up into here and then still do that drop. So it isn't a matter of when. Or no, excuse me, it's, <laughs> it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So if the market goes higher, it's not going to take away what's coming next. So, and, and we can put parameters on that. So to the downside picture, if it's going to kick in from here and be that larger down, then it's going to move quickly and it's gonna break here, here, and down into here. That will be its introduction, right? We're here. And it would be very appropriate because, again, if this is minor two, this is minute one. And then we're doing minute two, and it could be over. And we're now going to fall in a minute third wave. And it's a third of a third of a third. We've confronted these before. Now here we are again, just on a little bit bigger degree. So a little bit bigger wave. So I'm going to leave it there because I got. We have others to do behind this one. Um, again, for tomorrow, it's expiration. It's pre-holiday. Things can tend to free flow a little quicker because maybe there's not as many traders available. It's a long weekend. It's summer. Uh, many parts of the country, it's warm. So could be thin, but still move. And it's an easier day for firms to push it where they want the expirations to be, what they favor. So be on the lookout, keep both inside, uh, in sight, both sides, um, and trade without a bias. Trade the price action. Anything that happens within any of the component stocks amongst these indices that we track, everything will be reflected. Anything that's happening in any of those stocks will be reflected in the price. To know why it's going to go up, 
I just accept that it is because I'm using something different. I'm using Elliot, I'm using moving averages, et cetera. I'm gonna end it right there and look for that big picture update. I will get it done this weekend. And the next update will be likely on Monday, the 4th. Uh, as Sunday, I believe the Wobex is open, but unless something bad happens over the weekend, I would not be expecting it to be any different than adhering to the continued count of what I'm presenting right now. All right, so next update, Monday, July 4th. Have a great weekend.